Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I want to talk about how to deal with a panic attack. So this is like a little mini first aid kit just to keep in your mind for when the panic attack arises. It may not. Many of you who listen to the show have never had a panic attack, and that's awesome. You can use this for high stress levels. You can use this just for a good life to not let the stress begin to accumulate, right? That's where we get into trouble is by pushing it down and all down into the subconscious, down, down, down. And then we get triggered somewhere, somehow over something even tiny, and we are in panic mode. So let's look at the ways that we can have some first aid around panic attacks. Being overwhelmed by fear and feeling like you have to escape is such a hallmark of panic. That feeling of, I have to get out of here. I just feel like I, I, I have to change my environment. I can't be in this, wherever you are, this room. Actually, I remember uh, having panic attacks and feeling panicked when I was I was a draftsman for Cambridge Filter Corporation before I worked at Carrier, and I would be standing at my board, and I would just be working. It was a normal day, nothing unusual, as many of you would use the term, and I had used this too. It came out of the blue. I was just there working, doing one thing after another, as, as you would do at a board, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, out of the blue, I had this feeling inside me that I had to escape, that I had to leave the building. Now, I wasn't even in a cramped office or anything. Back then, we had the office was this huge office was partitioned into the different divisions and sections by walls that didn't even go all the way up. You could look over them if you got uh, a tall person got on their tippy toes. And there was certainly plenty of ventilation and air. It had nothing to do with anything in that particular moment. It was panic arising. And I felt like distinctly that I wanted to leave the building and run. And that was a curious thing because run. Why would I want to run? I wasn't in danger. But I didn't know that then that there were things inside me that were believing that I was in danger. And that message was getting to my body and it was preparing me for fight or flight. I was overwhelmed by fear and I felt like I was going to die. Can any of you relate to that feeling? You don't even know what it is, but all you know is I'm going to die. I didn't even have like choking or unable to breathe or any of those things. I just felt doom. You can't control this. And when you're in it, you are in it. You can't really control it. And if you try to avoid them, you're just running in the wrong direction. You you just need to ride this out and to stop adding to the ever accumulating stress that takes us into these type of panic situations. Sometimes they come out of the blue. Sometimes you can see why you got triggered, like getting on an amusement park ride that you know is not your cup of tea. And you you just know you cannot do it. You could have a panic arise at that point. That was triggered by being put on a ride you didn't want to be on or strapped in or buckled in, whatever. Of course, but sometimes they just come. And sometimes for me, they also would come while I was driving, like there it was. And 
and I had to deal in that moment. So we want to make sure that we're not adding any fuel to keep this going and that we are not adding in our daily lives more accumulation of stress that will be easily triggered and take us into a panic attack. So I have some tips here for you. Let's see how many I have. I have four of them that I want to go over. And first, I want to thank today's sponsors. Of course, Ned is with us and so many clients and group members and uh, listeners who send me email have been having great success with the Ned products. So if you haven't checked them out yet, you really should give them a try. These products that Ned offers are science-backed, nature-based solutions that offer an alternative to prescription and over-the-counter drugs. They are chock full of premium CBD and full spectrum of active cannabinoids, terpenes, flavonoids, trichomes. Ned's full-spectrum hemp oil nourishes the body's and endocannabinoid system to offer functional support for stress, sleep, inflammation, and balance. Ned CBD products have over 1,500 five-star reviews, and they work with incredible partners within the medical field, like Dr. Carolyn Leaf, Christian Gonzalez, and Will Cole. If you want to check out Ned and their full-spectrum hemp oil or sleep blend for yourself, we have a special offer for the Anxiety Coaches podcast audience. Go to www.helloned.com slash ACP or enter ACP at checkout for 15% off your first one-time order or 20% off your first subscription order. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com slash ACP to get 15% off your first one-time order or 20% off your first subscription order. Thank you. Thank you, Ned, for sponsoring our program and offering our listeners a natural remedy for some of life's most common health issues. And Beta Brand is with us. Have you ever got up in the morning wishing that you could go to work in your comfy pants? Well, now you can with Beta Brand's dress pant yoga pants. They're stylish and polished, but with the comfort of your favorite loungewear. And this is totally stress-free dressing. Beta Brand's dress yoga pants are designed with the fit and flexibility of yoga pants, but they look like professional dress pants. And the best part is that they have pockets. We're talking comfort and function. No more fake pockets that are sewn shut I know you people know what I'm talking about. These pants are designed for real women who have the need for real pockets. I love my Beta Brand pants. Now, our listeners can get 30% off their Beta Brand orders when you go to betabrand.com slash ACP. That's B-E-T-A-B-R-A-N-D dot com slash ACP for 30% off your order for a limited time. And when you use our special URL, you're supporting our show too. Find out why women are ditching typical work pants for Beta Brand's dress pant yoga pants. Go to betabrand.com slash ACP for 30% off. Now let's get back to the panic attack first aid. I know I had wished I had had some clue about what to do back in the day. So the first one I have is I want you to recognize what is actually happening. This is important that you see what is happening and pay attention to it as far as not thinking that it's something else, not thinking that you're you're having this or that. It's a panic attack. Just be clear about it and let the feelings be there. They're feelings. They cannot hurt you. The high levels of stress hormones that are being released to get you to move or to run or to escape are there because the body got the message there was something wrong. We are oversensitized, and at this point, we have higher levels of these stress hormones than are actually required. You got triggered about something, and it went into overdrive. So you are 
overstimulated. You don't even just have a little stress going on and a little bit of stress hormones. You have too much. The levels are too high. And you can't give in to this feeling. You cannot fight it. And don't respond with fear. What do I want you to do? I want you to ride it out. Let it flow. Let them come up and then let it go out again, just like waves in the ocean. You can ride this out. It, it'll it take some practice. The first few times you do this, it's, it's going to feel very foreign. But I'm telling you, when you fight it, or when you are responding with fear with it, you are just adding to it and you are prolonging it. So I want you to ride it out and let it flow. The second thing I want you to do is to diffuse the fear. Use your wise mind to counter what is scary, to counter what thoughts are coming up from the feelings that you are having. Let it be by reminding yourself that there is nothing dangerous really happening. So that's going to take you as hard as it is when you're in a panic to use your prefrontal cortex to actually think and talk back a little bit to this ancient brain that is kind of taken over at this point. Say, nothing is dangerous right now. Nothing harmful is happening to me. It's okay. It's the feelings from the high stress levels, the high levels of the stress hormones that are happening and they will pass. You have to talk back to that lizard brain. List out the evidence for what's going on for you. Is there something going on? If you're, if you can write it down right then, that's great. Maybe you can't. Maybe you're in a situation where you can't do that, but put the fear on the back burner and tell it you will check on it in another time versus giving into it and running with the what ifs and reacting by running or trying to escape. I mean, we try to do that. We try to get out of situations, out of places. Let it be there. It will pass. And like I said, if you can list out the evidence for the fact that you are safe and that there is nothing for you to fear right now, that would be helpful because it will give you something to do while these kind of stress hormones are raging through you. Remember, they don't rage on forever. Once you register safety, once you register safety to your brain, 90 seconds and those stress hormones begin to recede. So ride it out. It won't last forever. The third one that I have for you is I want you to wake up and stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system. Now remember, our central nervous system is made up of a parasympathetic side and a sympathetic side. And the parasympathetic side is rest and digest and peace and calm. It's the kind of place we fall back into. It's our default side of our nervous system. And the sympathetic side of our nervous system is the stress side. This is where we are, we have received messages of stress, of danger, discomfort, and we are springing into action. And so that nervous system shuts down things like digestion and it shuts down reproduction and it shuts down things that we don't need. It helps us to see better, to run faster, and to protect ourselves. But we don't need that all the time. The reason we get into the problem of panic attacks is because we are chronically stressed and we need to wake up our parasympathetic nervous system and stimulate it. And we do that in three ways that I want to share today. There's lots of ways, but today I will tell you about the Buddha belly breathing. This is where we relax our belly and let our breath go way down to the bottom of our lungs. This engages the vagus nerve, which stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. The belly rises and the belly falls. And that is so much better for our nervous system than breathing from the upper third part of our lungs. Because when we breathe up in the short and shallow, is that is a signal to the brain that we are in danger. 
then what are we doing? Then we are stimulating our sympathetic nervous system and we are giving out more stress hormones, which keep the cycle going. The second one to stimulate your parasympathetic side of your nervous system is to listen to music that stimulates peace and calm. This is going to be different for different people, but find music that just makes you feel awe or relaxed, right? We all can find that and have that handy for yourself. Make a playlist on Spotify. Keep music handy so that you can put your earbuds in and listen to music that is stimulating the side of your nervous system that brings peace and calm, that is rest and digest. And thirdly, use a guided relaxation audio like the body scan or like all of the things on calm. There's so many places you can go nowadays to get a guided relaxation audio keep that handy too. This is part of your first aid kit. Have these things ready for yourself so that they are your go-to when you feel the high stress or panic arising. And then the fourth point that I have for you today to keep in your first aid kit for when panic arises, the thing to do is to slow down. Whatever you are doing, just slow it down. Take your time. Become more mindful of what you are doing. Be in the moment that you are in. We are all guilty of going too fast. I certainly am. I found myself doing that today. I had a number of things that needed to get done. And the more that I felt that the time was pressuring in on me, the faster I felt like I needed to go and the less grounded I felt, the less in tune with what what I wanted to do and, and what I needed to accomplish. I began to feel that I was clenching my muscles um, and I had to physically tell myself to relax and that I would get done what Ever I got done. And that's all there is to it. I had to slow down actually to get more done. I hope you can hear that. Sometimes you have to slow down to go faster. The more I slowed down, the more I paid attention to the current moment, the present moment, doing what I was actually doing rather than being concerned about how much time was left to get these other things done. When I brought myself back to the present moment and my body relaxed, everything began to flow in a very orderly manner. And I tell you this because I want you to know that even after you recover from having panic attacks and you clear your stress and anxiety out that was harmful to you, you are always going to need to dip into these first aid kits to these tips and tricks in order to keep yourself on top of things. Because in this world, there is enough stress going around that if we don't take care of ourselves, it will begin to mount. It will accumulate. And then one day there will be the straw on the camel's back and we could be off and running and feeling extremely stressed. You don't ever need to go into a panic attack again. Believe me, as you clear this out, as you begin to be able to live and in the default side of your nervous system, the parasympathetic side, you will be able to clear out the stress before it builds to a place because you're not pushing it down into your subconscious and letting it go layer by layer until there's so much it has to break open. You can do this. And I'm so glad that you are here listening to the show. I hope this show today was helpful for you and that you will keep these ideas in your head for your first aid kit for panic attacks. I again, recognize what is happening and then use your wise mind to diffuse the fear. Wake up and stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system and slow down. Thank you so much for being here. I love being with you. That's it for today's episode. 
And before I read today's quote, I want to remind you that if you want more than what's offered here and more personal guidance, you might be ready for our group coaching membership program. It's a deeper dive into what you learn here on these episodes. Each month, you'll receive two anxiety clearing skill sheets sent in email. You'll also receive two live group coaching calls, which are recorded in case you can't attend. Those will help guide you through your challenges. And there's also a secret Facebook group for coach and community support every day, all month long. So if you're ready for more, go to anxietycoachespodcast.com slash group dash coaching and join today. I'd love to see you in the group. And now for today's quote. Everything you need, you already have. You are complete right now. You are a whole, total person, not an apprentice person on the way to somewhere else. Your completeness must be understood by you and experienced in your thoughts. You own your personal reality. And that's from Wayne Dyer. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at theanxietycoachespodcast.com.